Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us back here at Green Impact Partners Channel. We're sitting here once again with Jesse, and I have a juicy article I want to dive into. But first off, Jesse, how are you doing? I am doing very well today. How about yourself, Michael? I'm doing pretty well. And the article I want to dive into is from S&P Global Market Intelligence. They're talking about gas utilities are plotting an RNG expansion as supply chain issues emerge. So as we know, natural gas is a finite resource to some degree. And what makes it worse is supply chains, as with COVID or so on, can always be disrupted and having renewable natural gas would significantly help that. What would you have to say about this, Jesse? I mean, I agree completely. It is a finite resource. In fact, very finite. When we look at what we actually know is in the ground in different parts of the world, at our consumption rate, we don't have, uh, and I'm going to spell some data off that I can't back up right now, but give or take 50 years and we're out. And, and we don't have a solution for most of the world's energy needs that allows us to live without it today. So we're, we, we've got a lot of things to do and 50 years sounds like a long time, especially if you're, you're 20 years old, but 50 years in the the time frame of humanity is a very, very short amount of time to make a big change in our energy infrastructure. Yeah. And, and as importantly to providing additional gas sources, I don't know that within North America with the technology that exists today, we can get above about five or 6% of the nat gas supply coming from renewables um, and renewable gas, but that technology will advance and that will slowly go up. Maybe we can get to that 10%, a lot of stated goals for many of the states and, and, uh, countries are 10% of the supply coming from, and that would help a lot. But we, we're still going to have to find ways to meaningfully reduce our consumption of energy or be more efficient with our consumption of energy. Because mm -hmm. uh, as population of the world grows and, and yeah, as we continue to have different needs, and, and when you look at the, the way that our great grandparents used energy versus the way we use it. They're not the same at all, right? So we yeah. continue to find, we, we keep saying how oh, we're more efficient, we're driving electric cars and we, we run electric appliances, but we also have more of them and we have bigger houses and we have, so yeah. we, <laughs> we, we need to, we, we can't think that that trend is going away because it hasn't ever. Yeah. yeah, that's that's very true. And you know, um, when it comes down to why natural gas is, well, I mean, it's, it's worked very well. We have this infrastructure built around natural gas and going from natural gas to renewable natural gas seems an easier transition as, as I mean, there'll still be issues we have to work on infrastructurally, but it'd be significantly easier than going to say hydrogen, green hydrogen, stuff like that. Like we, we, we have some faith in natural gas. It's what saved Texas. I don't know if that's something I had mentioned before. Texas had its big freeze. It wasn't the, the renewables that helped it out. It was natural gas that picked up the slack. So even in a somewhat perfect future, when it comes to renewables or so on, we're still going to need, we're still going to need high energy systems, right? We're still going to need natural yeah. gas or enter X thing in the future that will provide when nothing else can. Yeah, yeah. Well, and not only that, if you could get to 10% and all of the natural gas consumed through the system was 10% and it's high quality RNG, again, we're talking about ifs because... <laughs> yeah, we're not there yet, yeah. but we're, we're actually carbon neutral in what we're doing. And, and so it's a very, very clean way to kind of manage our, our, our infrastructure and, and our world. But we, we have to, I believe, expect that the price of gas and renewable natural gas combined are going to go up pretty meaningfully over the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a, it is a finite resource and we are consuming more of it and, and it's not getting easier to get. Right now we're in this uh, somewhat euphoric state with it where as we were drilling for lots of oil, we were getting gas and, and we didn't have enough uses for it for a while. But now as, as consumption is going up and we're, we're liquefying it and, and exporting it, we're going to be in a spot where we actually don't have enough pretty soon, I think. Oh, and, nice. and that will drive price up. And so we've got to be prepared to understand how we're going to fill our energy needs and that it, it likely is going to cost us a lot more money yeah. to turn on our lights and, and do that kind of stuff uh, over the coming years. As again, you, you can't put a wind and solar project everywhere and, and still have a place to live and, <laughs> and a spot to grow food. So we've got to be more innovative uh, with, with natural gas, we've got to conserve more and find ways to be way, way more efficient. Um, and I think a lot of that are the little things that we do, right? Like if you can make all of your trips that you've got to do for shopping in, in one trip, instead of going out and coming home, do that. If you can, if you can carpool where possible, even within your own 
kind of friend and family network. Do that. Like there's, <laughs> there, yeah. there's a lot that we need to do better and we can and, and we don't do those things and we don't consider them, right? We, we say, oh, I'll drive an electric car. Well, if you're driving more, maybe you didn't do anything. Yeah. You could have, <laughs> would have been easier to drive your current car and drive less and you'd have done more for the environment. Like you, you've got to do the things that are hard personally too, not just the, not just throw money at it and be nice. not just throw money at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely, it's got to come from the people largely. People have to make a conscious decision and consciously educate themselves on things going on, have a bit of vision and be a little proactive with what's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed completely. So. All right. Well, Jesse, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and insight on this article. Thank you everybody for watching. You have any questions about it or anything else going on, let us know. And you know, we will get you some more exciting news as soon as it comes along. But for now, Jesse, thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. Great to chat with you.